it's it's starting to get nice out not today or the last two days but uh you know when it gets nice out here in a few days i really recommend that we all go out and we look at the outside of our house most people don't realize that the tip of your pencil right here a bat can get into that yeah a bat um, a mouse can also get into this area. So if you have a hole this big in your house, uh, a mouse or a bat can get in. So <clears throat> one of my suggestions is take your little pencil, go around, and if your pencil fits in a hole in your house, you have an opening. If you take your little pencil and it fits in like 200 different things around your house, yeah. what do you do? So you can get caulking. Um, you can fill it with various items, caulking, there's wire mesh that they make that uh, you can buy on Amazon that you can stuff into holes like if you have masonry brick. Um, you definitely want to be filling those or calling a, a professional that can, you know, get that taken care of. And that goes along with when you're outside, you know, look up at your roof line. Are there any holes that squirrels may have like chewed? Are there any entry points? Um, that some of these animals could be looking for entry. Look down below at your foundation. You know, are there any holes in the foundation where you can see stuff digging? I also recommend while you're outside, look at your trash can. Are there any paw prints on your trash cans? Are your trash cans like completely sealed and good to go? Um, a lot of times we see with raccoons when we go on investigations, if you have like a privacy fence or any kind of wood fencing, the raccoon will um, scratch at the fencing. So if you see scratching on your fencing, that's also a good indication that you may have a wildlife problem like coming close to your house. So while, while it's warm, clean your gutters. Yeah, you know, if you can get on the ladder and clean those gutters. Mice love to get nesting out of the gutters and they'll typically find that hole and get into your attic and then become an issue. Um, another crazy thing that's been happening to us is last week we had 13 calls from Walker Farms, um, all bird related, where birds were getting into exhaust vents. Uh, so, you know, like on the side of your house, where uh, sometimes you're outside and you may be doing laundry and you smell the, the fragrance of the laundry, that's your dryer exhaust vent. And what's happening in Walker Farms is the builders did not put bird guards over the dryer vents. And a lot of people don't have those. Well, year after year, you're using that dryer. Eventually, lint starts to collect in that dryer vent pipe and it will get stuck in the flaps of the dryer vent and the bird comes along and they find the lint and they're they're wanting to use it for their nesting but then they realize there's an opening and so last week we had 13 people in walker farms have birds getting in their dryer vents so you know while you're outside checking everything check those dryer vents to make sure that nothing's in them obstructing them and that they're cleaned out really well um, and then also my last tip is um, walk your yard um, we have moles and voles. They're not um, dangerous per se, but they can ruin your yard. And um, the difference between a mole and a vole, a mole um, eats worms and grubs. And so they go underneath the earth and they never really pop up above the surface. Um, they do to breathe occasionally, but they're mainly underneath. And so when you're walking your yard, you'll see mounds of dirt in a run. And that's how you know it's a mole. I don't know if you guys have heard of a vole before, but a vole um, is a vegetarian and they eat uh, grass and roots. And so if you have a vole problem, you'll see runs in your yard, but they're exposed runs. So they kind of look like little trenches going everywhere all throughout your yard. So um, if you've ever had a vole problem, so. So that's kind of the wildlife stuff and what you can um, do to help prevent things from getting into your house. So like I was talking about in the cities, how we're seeing a decrease in traffic, which means a decrease in food waste and garbage. The same applies to us now at home. Now here we are, we're all at home and we're all creating a lot of waste, more waste than we've ever 
ever had at home before. You know, the kids are home. My kids are eating like seven meals a day. My dogs can't even keep up with their crumbs. Okay, like seriously, my labs are like, we're full. That is enough crumbs out of you. <laughs> okay, they can't take anymore. Um, and we're cooking more meals. Like I said, they're eating seven meals a day. So the air fryer is constantly going and uh, the oven. And so we're cooking more, we're spilling more. Um, we're getting takeout. I've, I feel like I've cooked like 200 meals this month. And so, you know, occasionally we're getting takeout. Our takeout boxes are really starting to build up. Well, you cannot leave takeout boxes, you know, on your counter overnight, or you're going to have a big problem when you wake up in the morning if there's already an issue. So um, as we're at home, we're increasing our garbage, which attracts more bugs to our property. For instance, the fly. This It's concerning to me because, like, let's take a fly. They land outside on your garbage. They come inside to your house and land on your prepping areas in your kitchen. They can spread dangerous pathogens. And so it's really important that we're containing our trash and doing um, things to uh, decrease these pests coming into our house. You know, a lot of times when Johnny and I go into homes where there's a roach problem or a mouse problem, those people typically tend to have respiratory issues. So we really don't want to even be adding to the problem right now with COVID-19 and having roach issues and mice issues. And again, those roaches and mice aren't able to find food in the towns. They're moving, they're going to be moving into our areas. And as we hit spring, they're all waking up to this awesome buffet. They're like, whoa, you guys are all home now. Great, we have so much food. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, they, they have a lot that they can feed on um, and eat. So here's some tips on keeping pests out of your home right now. Um, Make sure that you have um, bait boxes around your house. Do you guys know what bait boxes are? They're black okay. and they're like boxes, okay? And they hold poison in them for mice. And you should be putting them anywhere between 10 to 15 feet away all the way around your house. Basically, when mice run or they move, they like to run um, a, right next to the wall. That's where they feel safest, right? I mean, think about if we were being attacked by aliens, you know, we'd be scaling the walls. We'd be staying close. That's how they are, you know? They're staying really close. And if we have those bait stations put right up next to the house, the mouse goes in, they eat our poison um, that we put in there, and then they don't even get into your house. That's so, make sure you guys have bait boxes. Um, any management company that comes to your house, uh, for pest control should be placing these on your house. So um, if you don't, you can go to Menards, you can get on Amazon and buy these and go to Menards and buy poison. And it just really protects the house, especially because we're having more trash too. It's just attracting them even more. So um, with the kids home right now, I also suggest pulling out all of your appliances. Pull out all those appliances, vacuum, get a disinfectant, wipe everything down underneath where those appliances were, and the cabinets on the sides too, because a lot of times you'll have spills. Um, that way, if ants or spiders or roaches, worst case scenario, get into your house, they don't have anything to feed off of, right? The only reason roaches are going to come into your house is because they want food. So we need to be taking all that food source away. Um, pull everything out of your cabinets, uh, vacuum all of your cabinets, make sure there's no, no crumbs, put all of your food in containers, um, and, and make sure all that's sealed. That way, if you do end up having an issue, they don't contaminate your food. Um, and, and that's especially important right now. Um, uh, make sure you're taking out the garbage regularly. You know, as soon as it gets full, take it out, tie it up and make sure that it's in your garbage can that's secured. Um, that way you don't have an issue with your trash. Another thing is, is we're all starting to buy a lot of stuff online. You know, like my daughter the other day was like, I'm out of body wash. Well, I'm not gonna run to Walmart to get you body wash right now. You know, I get on Amazon and I'm ordering that, right? You guys are ordering a ton of stuff, which means we're having an increase of boxes. 
cockroaches breed in cardboard, right? You could be getting boxes that have cockroach eggs in them. Don't leave cardboard boxes in your house. As soon as you get the cardboard box, make sure that you take your items out, obviously wash it like the CDC says, but then break down that box, and we have, the way we do our house is we have our trash can right next to the siding, right up against it. And I put all of my boxes in between the siding and the trash can so that they can't get wet. Because when cardboard gets wet, that's like heaven for a roach. So make sure that all the boxes you get are broken down. I know, this is funny. Make sure they're broken down and that they're outside of your house. Um, because you would not believe how many roach calls we've been getting lately. And they're like, we have no idea where these came from. And uh, our assumption, and we've done a lot of webinars and a lot of seminars online in the last few weeks um, with the National Pest Management Association, and then talking about these specific things that are generating problems for people. And one of those is, is that we're getting an increase um, of cardboard and roaches come you would not believe how many problems we're having with roaches so okay i feel the need to like jump up from this webinar as you're talking and go find my boxes and take them outside <laughs> yeah i mean all it has to have is and and roaches lay hundreds of eggs at a time so you okay, know that's if, gross. <laughs> if a roach got in a box they would be on the seam you may never see it it's in your house they hatch and boom you have 500 roaches, baby roaches running around. So um, <laughs> make sure you take out your boxes. Um, so, you know, the point of all of this really, it's so important that we stay on top of all of these steps because we don't want to exchange one health concern for another, right? And basically that's what Johnny and I have been learning the last few weeks is that we've got COVID but we really need to stay protected against all of these diseases that pests and wildlife can carry and spread to us. Um, so that's, it's just really important to stay on top of these steps right now so that you're extra protected while you're at home, so. Okay, so now I wanted to play a game, Allison, with you. Oh, huh, okay. <laughs> I know how much you like games. Yeah. Um, I thought I would up the ante, and so here's the game. We're gonna put a pest or a wildlife picture up, and you have five seconds to name the insect or the animal, and for every one you get right, the ladybug's gonna donate $10 to the Boys and Girls Club of Boone County, so. Okay. There's 12, so you have $120 we could be donating today. Oh so. my gosh. Yeah. Oh gosh, pressure. I, it's fun, right? I mean, right. <laughs> okay. So you'll have five seconds once we get the first one up. Okay. Okay. That's a mouse. Right. No, that is a vole. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Next. It's awful cute. It is cute, isn't it? I think they're cuter than mice. It looks like a beaver. It's a groundhog. <laughs> okay so apparently i'm not very good with right i think you're gonna get this next one i really feel confident you may get this next one uh i don't want it <laughs> okay ready these are those are two animals you don't really see so uh, to be but, honest, that looked like a beaver it, it has did, a weird it tail did. It did have a weird tail, but not a beaver tail, Allison. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yeah. All right, go. Skunk! Yay! $10. <laughs> 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 uh, do you know how we trap skunks, Allison? Uh, no, I have like, no idea. Do, what do you do once you get a skunk in a trap? Run like hell. <laughs> 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 That's the correct answer. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> My dogs once got hit by a skunk. I let them out one morning out on a farm and 
um, they all came back in and got the tomato juice bath and I could not get that smell because it's, it's almost like it's oily. It's like, you can't get mm -hmm. it off of them. And I had yeah. a white dog at the time and I used tomato juice on him and he was pink for Aww. months. <laughs> well, when we get, when we remove a skunk, Johnny has, you, you have to walk really slow and basically you like put a sheet or a blanket up. And when you get close, you throw the blanket or sheet over the cage. And believe it or not, once a skunk can't see what's going on, they will not spray. So you could like pick up the cage and move it all around. They won't spray. It's so weird. As soon as they can't see a predator, they don't spray. That's bizarre. That mm -hmm. is really, really interesting yes. information that I would have never known because I will yeah. never get that close to a skunk. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> not unless you have a sheet. <laughs> Um, even then, I don't carry a sheet with me, and if I'm outside yes. and I see a skunk, I'm going. You're running. Away. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this one's a little hard. I'm. Okay, well, I've not done so well with the easy ones. So, all right, let's okay. go. Okay. <laughs> That's a mole. Yes. Good job. <laughs> good job. Have you ever had a mole in your yard? Yeah, actually, those same dogs that got sprayed by the skunk used to work on either end of a mole run and would trap them, and then would dig down and get them. I know. Do they need a job? <laughs> well, unfortunately, none, none of them are still alive, but they were really good at it. <laughs> yeah. Possum. Good job. Wow, I could pass yeah. like second grade right now. <laughs> are, you, are you smarter than a second grader? Well, you, apparently not by the two first grade. questions. <laughs> Possums are actually, um, if you're going to have something in your yard, possums are the best. They eat ticks. Yeah, but don't they also have like a bunch of babies when they have babies? Like a bunch. Yeah, but they hang upside down and that's cute, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't they have a pouch? Aren't they marsupials? I don't know if they have a pouch or not. Oh, Google. Oh, uh, we're going to have to Google that. Yeah. Uh, uh, you uh, s possums are like the least thing we trap. I bet we've only gotten like two possum jobs. They very, very rarely get into houses. If they do, it's by accident. They don't mean to. Or when your dogs carry them in. Or when your dogs carry them yeah, in. Yeah, that, that too. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Allison knew that. The most notable, the only marsupial in the United States and Canada. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add on an extra $10 just for that fun fact right there. <laughs> You've redeemed yourself from the beaver. How did I know that? Weird fact. That's, I can tell a beaver really from a fact. whatever that was, but I know that but a possum is a marsupial. Marsupial, okay. Raccoon. My favorites. Good job. They're awful cute. They are. We have, um, I, did you see my video on my baby raccoons? Yes. We, we've got, we've, um, I think we're at 30 already in oh a month gosh. that we've rescued out of houses, babies. So that's we're, crazy. Having, we're having a, a hard time keeping mom and babies together recently, but, um, we got a good rehabber mm -hmm. that we use that takes all of our babies. Wow. 30 already. Wow. It's going to be a big season. Yeah. Last year, of course, it was our, only our first year last year, but we did over 50. And as the, uh, this is a problem until the end of May. So I would assume we're going to hit about a hundred. Wow. We got to think raccoons have no predators. We, uh, cars are their biggest predator. And that's the other thing. Uh, we're not out all driving. Think about all the yeah. wildlife that gets killed on the roads. That's we're we're seeing a big decrease in that too. So yeah, that's also making the population grow. Okay, we're switching to insects now. Ooh, okay, all right. Mm. This is number seven. You ready? Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> that looks like a cockroach. Good job. Have you ever seen a cockroach in person? Oh my gosh, I had a dorm that was filled with them. They had an old area where it used to be the incinerator room that they turned into the recycling room and it wasn't cleaned out often enough. And mm -hmm. we used to kill cockroaches 
put them in a box and once a week take them to the dorm headquarters and say you've got to come spray this is how many we caught there were hundreds a week johnny got a roach from somebody's house a few weeks ago and did an experiment he put the roach in a glass mason jar and and tight uh tighten the lid you know uh, so it was completely airtight. How many days do you think that the cockroach lived? Uh, a week. Nine days. <gasps> Nine days. Oh. A cockroach actually eats its own feces to survive. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> oh. So, so it would go to the bathroom and then it would just eat it so it could survive oh <laughs> and we believe it actually served we believe it actually died because of lack of air so wow i said well we should do the experiment next time and and um undo the lid every day so or like air poke goes a tiny in. hole in the lid mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh my gosh nine that days without horrifying food. nine days without food and water yep. okay um hmm. and air yeah. He would not. He would not let me open up the bottle. He was like, "No, it's for the experiment. Like, I really want to see how many days it can go without air, without oxygen. Nine days. Wow. Um, yeah, that's insane. Oh well. <laughs> they always say that those are one of the things that would survive a um, nuclear yeah. winter. Yes. Yes. You can see why. Pest me. <laughs> Okay, that's a mouse. That's a mouse. Good job. <laughs> and like I said, we've been having a ton of mouse problems. Um, yeah. uh, big cities are having these rat issues, but um, we're just seeing a lot of people having mice issue, mainly because it's getting cold and then warm and cold and warm, and they're really confused. And so they'll come out and then, and yeah. Oh, it's a tick. Tick, yes. Tick season is very, very close approaching. It's in fact, uh, ticks actually can live outside in the winter. Um, so you know, always making sure that your animals are um, have the flea tick and heartworm medicine is really important. We treat, and I know a lot of other companies do yard treatments for fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes. So making sure especially now that we're all at home, now's kind of the, the best time to be doing that because we're going to be spending so much time outside this summer, it seems like, with our families. So making sure that your yard is is clean of those is great. Yeah, those are nasty. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, flea? No, I'll give you one more chance. Oh. It's not a stink bug, is it? Nope, it's a bed bug. Oh, oh, yuck. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have known that one. Uh, and I'll tell you the biggest problem we're having right now with bed bugs is when we go to do a bed bug treatment, um, everybody has to be out of the house for several hours. So it, it's been really difficult for our clients um, that have bed bugs right now because they have nowhere to go. A lot of them oh. are having to just hang out in their car for hours while we do treatments. So um, it's it's kind of a it's such a bad situation for people that have a, a bed bug issue right now. And here's an I'll let you try to redeem yourself for the ten dollars here. Do you think a bed bug can go longer than a year without eating? Yes. Yes, they can. <laughs> how disgusting is that a bed, bug, a bed bug can go an entire year without feeding on on a human and did you know that there's actually another type of bed bug called a bat bug no. it looks identical to a bed bug i'm serious there is like no differences between them and the bat bug actually lives on bats they don't live off of humans and so a lot of times when we're in houses removing bats we'll go up into the attic and we'll find bat bugs and 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 this is another thing that's crazy we've gotten calls from people and they're like dude we have bed bugs and we'll go and we'll be like yeah you do have bed bugs let's check your attic first and if we see bats then we can just pretty much assume that they're bat bugs because they're so hard to identify. Them. 
Okay, so do they have the same kind of living habits? I mean, will they be able to survive that kind of, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. yep. that's and they, horrible. They, they only eat off the blood of bats. Wow. So you got your bed bugs and your bad bugs, and they are identical. Only an etymologist with a microscope would be able to tell you the difference. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bed bugs are really hard to get rid of. Do you do you guys use chemical or heat treatment? We do chemical. I don't like heat because it can destroy personal items, heating up the house that much, um, especially in older homes with wiring issues, uh, heating that up. And I just feel like the chemical knocks it out really quick. I've We've done hundreds of bed bug jobs and they're all very successful with chemical. But the down part is, is it's toxic chemicals. You know, we're killing bed, something that, that can survive without eating for 365 days. And so, like I said, it's just such an unfortunate situation for people that are having this issue because we're like, hey, can you leave for the day and go where? Like, where can they go? So. At least now it's getting a little warmer if they had to go sit outside for a day. Yeah, I guess at, at least, but. right. And that's, and you got to decide, do you want to go sit in your car for eight hours or do you want bed bugs gone tonight? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so that's also, it's just a really unfortunate situation and uh, bed bugs are the worst. I, I would mm -hmm. take anything over a bed bug just because um, they're, they are so difficult to get rid of. I'm. They're well, very. and I was told to really check hotel rooms and to be careful with your luggage. I mean, I started yeah, taking yeah. kind of junky luggage whenever I go on trips anymore. So if I had to pitch it, I could. Mm -hmm. so. we've, we've seen things from Amazon that have been returned and sent to another home. We had a lady that got a poster from Amazon and the poster had bed bugs on the back side of it. And so it had been, it had come from Amazon. It had been a return. Cause you know, how sometimes they give you the option for used and it had bed bugs on it. So you really have to inspect everything that comes into oh your home. Oh my gosh. Companies because you never know. And it, you know, think about a Kohl's or a Target where they're packing inventory. If one of those has bed bugs and they go to work, um, and it crawls onto a package that goes into your home. You can get it that way. Another big way is the travel. Um, I have somebody right now that just called me yesterday, and they travel for volleyball constantly with their child. And after um, one of their one of their um, uh, games that they went to out of state, they got a lot of bites in the hotel. And when they came back a few weeks later, they realized they were infested with bed bugs. Oh, they, no. It it um can I it can e escalate very very quickly. That's so, awful. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, I have to say, you're making me want to go find my personal bubble <laughs> between the COVID and the critters. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's um it can be scary, but as long as you're really checking over your stuff and taking the steps necessary right now, mm -hmm. you're gonna be fine. Um, and and like I always suggest having a pest management company on your side is always, is always the best thing. I, I know with my quarterly um, memberships that we hold, if there's any problem, they have unlimited services and we come right out. I know Terminex, Orkin, all of the big game players, they're the same way. You know, they're gonna come out immediately if you have an issue, so. Mm -hmm. So you have a quarterly pest management program. I didn't know about that. Tell yeah, us about so that. Basically, we come every 90 days. We place bait stations on the outside of your house. Um, we use a, this, this is an interesting fact. We use a second generation poison. Did you know there's two types of poisons? No. No. Okay, so back in the 70s, um, poisons started becoming pretty popular for getting rid of mice, right? We're starting to become more sophisticated and we are figuring out ways to get mice out of our house. Well, what they were finding was a lot of eagles and hawks were dying because the mice would get into the poison and then the hawks and the eagles would eat the mice. Same with cats and dogs. And so um, they developed a poison called second generation poison. And you, if you go to Menards or Lowe's, you'll see um, both types. And you always wanna get that second generation poison. That's what we use. And it means that once it's digested by one animal, 
it doesn't work anymore. So the poison that we put in people's houses, if a mouse gets into the trap and dies, and then their dog goes outside and plays with the mouse or eats the mouse, it will not affect their dog or cat. So, wow. Mm -hmm. So um, we start, first of all, if you're a quarterly member, um, a membership, we come and we do a full pest and wildlife investigation. We get on the roof, we get in the attic, we look for any entry point, a quarter inch or larger. We take pictures and show you where it's all at and give you an estimate to fix up anything. Um, you get the rodent stations on, on all around the house and then every 90 days we come exchange the poison because it gets stale after 90 days. Um, we do an interior and exterior treatment um, for over 75 different types of bugs, including roaches. Um, and then we, this is really cool, we sweep the outside of your house. So Johnny and our crew members, we have these big brooms. Um, and basically we sweep the whole house for cobwebs, bird's nests, wasp nests, and just knock everything down so that it's clean. And then you get unlimited services in between your 90 day treatments. So, and that wow. starts, starts about 135 um, um, a quarter. So it's That's a good idea. Yeah, when we started this, we started treating our house every 90 days and I never see any, I have not seen a bug in my house in over a year. So wow. it, it works. The, the stuff we use works. And um, the chemical that we work, that we use, all of the chemicals we use, um, before I even um, will put it in my, um, my client's houses, I make sure that it can be one, used in a hospital and to be used in a daycare. So I know that everybody's safe when we're treating. That's really good. <clears throat> I try to just use the most mild chemicals possible, you know, unless there's a really big problem. Yeah. You know, just start out with the, the easy stuff. And, and we also do a lot of essential oil treatments, um, which is like rosemary, mint, lavender, stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. all natural remedies, but I don't suggest that right now with COVID-19, um, you definitely need chemicals right now to be warding off everything that's gonna be coming our way as, as we continue to stay home. That looks like a pill bug. It is, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Some people call them like roly poly. Roly polies, yes. Yep. But they're really pill bugs, so. All right, last one. Okay. Girl. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's see. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, $110. Woo! That, you and I, that I'll donate, uh, I'll write a check and get somebody at the booth. That's you know who I awesome. Can get it to, you yep, know? I and sure do. Do we have somebody in our Z Wing group? Yep, that's the okay, um, executive director. Perfect. I'll reach out to her and get her a check cut today. So. Awesome. You're awesome. That was fun. Hey, thank you so much for no, letting me present you. today. And um, just remember to follow some steps that I've given you because like I said, we don't want to be taking one health crisis and starting a whole nother epidemic from us staying at home. And that's why they've deemed uh, pest management companies essential um, because pests and wildlife can spread disease. So just really important to make sure that you're keeping everything away and the first sign that you have any problem call a professional so. yeah no kidding thank you so much this was fun thank and we've you. all learned tons we really appreciate yeah. you doing this thank today you so much hey you guys have a great day thanks you hey, too Bye. you too bye